Well, now I'd like to turn to uh, David Woodhead. David is going to uh, build a shelter for us. So David, welcome. Yeah, nice to be here. That's great. Welcome to my basement. Uh, sh should I go ahead and uh, share screen now? Yes. Yeah, you should be able to. Yeah. Here we go. There we go. Okay, and I'll go full screen, I would think, here. Just a minute. Enter full screen. There we go. How does that look? Everybody got nice. that? Okay. Um, so what I'm going to talk about is just a, a, a sort of a scenery revision on, that I did on my layout, and I, I found a place for a, um, a little shelter, I'll, and we'll, we'll get to that. But the, the inspiration really, for me, often comes from my collection of books, and um, uh, this is just a few that I grabbed uh, about an hour ago and took a picture of. But uh, as you can see, they're mostly narrow gauge subjects. Um, the one we're going to, uh, the subject we're going to tackle tonight, it comes from this book here, Three Feet on the Panhandle. And the same photograph is actually uh, in this one, a slightly different version. And, um, but I also really like the castle in Slocan out in BC as a um, short line mountain railroad. Uh, uh, this is Newport and Sherman's Valley over here. That's in south uh, central Pennsylvania, not far from the East Broad Top. Uh, this is the Ohio River and Western, another one of my favorites. Um, anyway, so I'm, I'm often cruising these books looking for ideas and uh, flavor, really, for my layout. So in um, this is a scene on the Waynesburg in Washington, uh, uh, not far from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So this is the station called uh, Van Kirk, which is just a flag stop. Uh, nothing much happening here. There's a little village nearby. Uh, it's just south of Washington, Pennsylvania, which was one of the, well, it's the Waynesburg in Washington, so it's one of the termini of the uh, railroad. Uh, I love this picture. The, this really speaks to me, and I really, I, I, I found, I'm so happy that I found a way to incorporate this into my layout. Um, but, I, you know, just the, the sort of the field behind um, this whitewashed retaining wall here um, with the small flag stop station. Oh, here's something I haven't incorporated yet, just as a reminder to myself. This one pole here, I'm not sure what it's for, uh, but you can also see more whitewash here and they've even whitewashed the uh, timber supports. And also to cap it off, there's a train, looks like it's just leaving. And uh, there's this guy standing in the baggage door. To, <clears throat> to me, that says so much about rural railroading in uh, this is about 1910 they started using this combine in 1910 so i imagine it's not too long after that and the way that this dirt road sort of snakes around out of uh, the valley here and comes up there's a little parking area here so uh this is my model um uh i you know, i'll talk later about incorporating these steps the steps are not on the prototype but there was just no other way for people to get up there. So uh, uh, that's some part of the topography uh, that I had to deal with. So, uh, oh yeah, by the way, the, this photograph uh, was shot, of course, with my digital camera. Um, and I uh, first, um, uh, in Photoshop, I uh, took the color out. You just go to black and white. And then there's a really nice um, uh, filter that's called film grain. And it not only adds a bit of the film grain, you can really see it on the side of the car here, but it really sort of makes, it, it enhances the contrast in a, in a way that to me is reminiscent of these types of pictures. Um, like if you just take the, the color out of a photograph, you're not left with something as satisfying as this in terms of replicating old photographs. Anyway, I'm really happy I found this little filter. So in, um, one of the books, uh, there's this handy uh, plan for that station. It's, it's actually a Pennsylvania Railroad standard design. Uh, the Pennsylvania Railroad had taken over the Waynesburg and Washington at a certain point, and also the Ohio River in Western. So um, uh, this, th this is very tiny in one of the books. And in fact, it's an end scale plan. And uh, so I blew it up to a uh, quarter inch scale. I'm, not, I'm in ON3. And I made, um, these are the sides. What I'm using here is, uh, this is 
um, O scale uh, passenger car car siding. Um, it uh, it just looked around the right uh, width for the uh, for this kind of uh, um, this is a very narrow board and and I I wanted to do the inside as well so you'll notice that I have duplicated uh, inside outside inside outside and this is the back wall inside and outside and at this point I uh, I sprayed it with um, hmm, what was it to me a gray as a primer um, you know you can't really paint acrylics right onto styrene in a very satisfactory way so I uh, I, I spray it with uh, this gray it looks kind of yellow in this picture because of the lighting but um, it's a to me a gray primer and then I add a couple of different colors of um, I'm not even sure I should have written down exactly what I used here but uh, I use some of the craft paints that I you can even get them at a the dollar store um, uh, there's there's probably two or three colors of brown there that I've kind of brushed on then gone back and dry brush basically you kind of make a mess until you're happy with what you've got and then um, uh, on top of that I do a whitewash coat of uh, in my case I was using tube acrylic it's just a uh, titanium white and uh, that's a really nice consistency um, it's not as as liquid it's sort of like toothpaste comes out like toothpaste and um, so I dry brush that on um, oh we'll go back to here you can sort of see some of the texture I was going for in this the uh, the siding uh, I'll go ahead here oh yeah right I was doing a lot of this work up at my uh, country place up at my cabin on uh, Fletcher Lake it's about three not three hours north of Toronto um, and um, back in the spring when I was building this um, I, I what I do is I take a little box of um, tools and uh, parts and things that I think I need for a project uh, it's usually one of those Bachman uh, green boxes and everything fits into that unless there's some other unusual kit and uh, I build it and then, and then I when I finished it I just post it on this stump with all the moss and everything and put a couple little figures in there to shoot the, this picture but you can see that in this color picture uh, I'm using um, oh I can't remember it's probably Mount Albert um, two by fours for the exterior bracing and decorative trim so here uh, because I was working up north uh, I uh, I didn't have my ultimation sander with me uh, I have taken it up there um, but um, I, I basically just figured out a sequence to cut these and just cut them with my exacto knife and um, to get so, so you can see the sequence I would have done this horizontal and this vertical then to fit these pieces in I would cut them slightly longer than I need I need to this is all pre-painted again with uh, browns and then a kind of a wash dry brush of the green on top I think that's just a coach green of some kind. Um, and, and then take very thin slices with an exacto knife, very sharp exacto knife, I might add, to make them fit exactly in there and uh, get a nice tight fit. But uh, if I was at home, I would, of course, use my ultimation. Now, the roof, going back to this one, um, this is, uh, there's all kinds of really great roof uh, shingle products. And um, I don't know, I'm going back to here. You can just barely see um, there's other pictures of similar of these uh, shelter stations they all have a kind of a small um, shingle pattern on them and what I had stored away in a box for oh man probably 10 or 20 years it, it are these these are Walker model service uh, styrene shingle castings and they kind of nest on top of one another and uh, if you paint them up they're pretty good i'd never used them i've had this box sitting around forever and uh, i thought finally i'm just going to get going to try them out so again i've primed them uh, with the same to me a gray primer and um, then painted them uh, you can probably see it best in the in whoops in this picture uh, with several layers of brown um, and um, and then some uh, washes of uh, um, the good old uh, India ink and alcohol. Uh, I didn't have any hunter line with me at the time, unfortunately, because I was up there, but I did have a little bottle of my India ink wash. Um, and then 
there's you can also this is the only view that I have uh, that shows the um, the little bench inside and that's on the plans as well. So here's my scenery. This is as close as I have to a before picture. Um, but you can see that this place on the layout was just custom made for this to fit into because of the lay of the land here. So this uh, I'm just starting to play around with supporting the uh, the station in in some kind of way to see how it's going to look using uh, these are just brass blocks that I've got around on my workbench Wh whatever holds it up uh, temporarily to have a look at it um, I'm, the track layout is not right um, of course the uh, at Van Kirk on the Waynesburg in Washington they just had a passing siding starting around there they didn't have this extra trackage and of course there's not this industrial trackage at the front we'll get to that uh, in a minute so I'm just starting to look at it. Then what I did was I took a uh, drywall saw, saw, like one of those really pointy, dangerous looking saws with the giant teeth, and actually just cut through the plaster. And um, I do use foam under the plaster in some places in my layout, but here it was um, uh, plaster on top of um, a cardboard web. So I brutally uh, sawed my way through that. And started on my retaining wall. Now, I really like the rough uh, look on this. This is actually cedar. Um, back when I was garden railroading, uh, I had uh, I cut my own ties, and I had a whole bunch of odd pieces of cedar left over, which I've hung on to. And it's so different from basswood. It really uh, just I'll just go back to that original black and white picture. You can just see. Look at this this texture here. That is not something you can easily get with basswood um, without a lot of effort. And you can see it back here. It's really rough. So um, you can, uh, I, I again here I've started with some brown stains of various kinds. And then uh, here I've added whitewash, which is again just tube acrylic uh, and dry brushed on. I, I, I didn't want to fill in all those holes in the grain. I just uh, did it on top and uh, I kind of like the, this effect. And I've started to work on putting in those vertical posts and you can see how I lined them up. I, I put in this one here uh, and then this one over here and join them together at the top so that all of the other posts would have the same height at the top. I was trimming them from the bottom and then later on I went and touched up the, uh, the whitewash to make them look more, more even. And then, of course, I, I extended this whole thing over to the right to, fin to uh, do the other half. So um, these were all pre-cut, pre-stained, and pre-whitewashed, kind of roughly. Uh, and you can see how I'm holding up. Like, I made this sort of goopy mixture. I, I, I didn't use plaster here. Uh, that is actually um, an acrylic, um, a very thick matte medium and uh, mixed in with some sand and some uh, color um, just to basically to hold things together temporarily until I get the scenery uh, more complete and we'll get to that too in a minute. Uh, here we are this is uh, coming together I, I've got a uh, platform cut out and um, it just braced up there just roughly right now. So and I've, and I've finished I've now that all the tops of my fence um, supports are all even, then I could glue on the, the fence railing. I was, I, 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 because of the lay of the land here, it is pretty tight. I filled in uh, here with, um, uh, mo mostly what I'm using for ground cover here is sand. So a lot of it is uh, industrial sand. Uh, play, there's play sand, which is very even. And then there's this sort of industrial or building supply company kind of sand which gives you a lot more variety and most of this ground cover here which is not finished in this picture is um, uh, comes from that kind of uh, very rough sand that I've uh, sieved and filtered to give various textures so that it's fine here it's rough here I'm putting little piles of some of the sifted rocks that are left over uh, to suggest a variety in the uh, texture now uh, here's the this is the overall scene in fact I shot this today because I wanted to illustrate really how it fit into the landscape um, over here this is the Solway uh, Felspar company 
and uh, so you can see there's it's got its own little yard and its own little uh, shunter here. Um, this locomotive actually uh, pulls uh, delivers cars down here. The road engines are not allowed on this industrial siding, so the the, sh the shunter will always go up and do the shunting uh, if there's a train in the yard. Um, but uh, what this really illustrates is the need for these stairs and uh, there all these employees need access to their uh, their flagstop station so i'm going to make some stairs um, there are various products for making stairs i think evergreen at one point uh, have had made a, a nice sort of prefab stair um, uh, styrene kit um, but because I, I know there's more stairs in my future, I, uh, I made this uh, brass um, um, sort of jig uh, pattern. Uh, and so that uh, I made the sides of my stair pieces, and here's one that's sort of roughly assembled. Uh, this dark brown part, you can see my cursor, I'm taking it, right? Um, the, uh, the dark brown part is actually styrene because it cuts nicely. Um, it gets a nice clean cut. And then the outside uh, that we'll see in a minute is um, a, a layer of wood so that you get this effect here. Here's my jig I, I, and here's a piece of styrene. These are just uh, those very coarse HO spikes. I don't know they're lifelike or something like that so that I can position my uh, jig and uh, cut all of these little things to just a little slice of the exacto knife and you've got yourself some uh, stair risers uh, so you can see how i put them on the inside to take the the um, the treads and you can see that on the outside it is layered uh, just a piece of um, one by or a, i'm not sure what that is two by ten can't remember whatever whatever worked and so I've got uh, to make these stairs, I've got a, a short run, a long run and a little platform in between. And here I am, uh, I've got my um, platform in position and I, um, I'm holding this and I'm actually ACCing. Oh, by the way, I use Gorilla ACC um, for just about everything. Uh, here when I was talking about um, the, the shelter itself, styrene sides, uh, wood trim. I use the Gorilla ACC and um, I don't even think about it. It's been a while since I used any other glue. I do have Aileen's and I have uh, Carpenter's glue which I use as well in some things but on my workbench it, my go-to is uh, Gorilla ACC. It's nice and quite thick and it doesn't set up right away. You've got a little bit of working time. A few seconds anyway. So you can see how I'm working my way down uh, I start at the top and because I want the last stair to be um, the same um, rise and run going up to the platform. So I want to be able to control that. I don't want to have like half a step at the top of my stairs. So I do this first. I'm just holding it in place. Um, here's my foreman here making sure I'm doing a good job. And uh, then uh, once I've got all that assembled roughly, um, Here's how I made my um, handrails. So I've got um, brass wire. Uh, in this case, I, I use on um, uh, music wire, steel music wire for a lot of stuff. But in this case, uh, I had brass wire. I think it's about uh, 026, like 26 thou. And uh, I just cut little pieces. I, and here's a little piece of one by two. And again, I'm using these spikes to hold these things in position. And uh, these up here, you can see one, two, three, those are little chunks of solder. And um, so I apply a little bit of flux. I use my gigantic and not very subtle uh, um, soldering gun and just a touch of that. Uh, oh yeah, just uh, take the tweezers, put the piece of solder right there. Uh, it'll stick because the flux will hold it. And then just touch it and it will go. I, I do have a resistance soldering unit, but I don't really need to fire it up for this uh, because the, the, the amount of metal there that you have to heat up is so small that this on the high setting uh, does it in like one, one or two seconds, honestly. You touch it and the solder melts and it's pulled into place and it ends up looking like this. Um, 
you can see that I flattened the end and bent them around a bit, the end of the brass wire. I actually just, um, uh, I use a vise and I just uh, grab it and squeeze the vise uh, to get that little flat effect there. And then uh, gun bluing. Uh, all that is, I just have a little tray and uh, put this whole thing in gun bluing, solder and all. Um, the solder, of course, won't take the gun bluing very well, so you have to touch that up with some paint. But uh, honestly, uh, um, I really like that effect. There's all kinds of different um, 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 bluing and blackening. Uh, there's old, I have the old black in it. I still have some left. I don't have much. Um, Jack's Industries makes a really nice uh, blackener and a sort of a brown color as well. Uh, and I have those as well. But for this, I use the gun bluing. It just seemed to work. Uh, okay, now I've got everything in position. You can see I've got I've got the um, railings there, and uh, this is uh, scenery touch up. So here, uh, basically, he, here's an example of my uh, sand, and uh, that's kind of unsifted. You can see how there's rough sand in there and the fine stuff all together. Uh, but I, but I have a whole uh, box of uh, sifted and uh, sieved sand. Um, various finenesses down to almost dust actually I have one I was out um, in the moraine country up here uh, like just north of Lake Ontario and I, I looked down and I realized that um, the, that what I was walking on was this extremely fine sand so I had a bottle um, it was a, that, this is a long time ago it was a stubby beer bottle actually and so I filled it with that sand, and I've been using that sand ever since for the very fine um, paths, um, things like the road here. Like you see how that is almost, has almost no texture. Uh, you want to get right down to that so it'll contrast really well with the very coarse rocks and everything in between. And so here I've got just sort of leftovers. Uh, this is sort of... Um, uh, leftover foliage and stuff from making trees. This is a mixture of um, that uh, hiki, H-E-K-I. Hiki, um, it's like a teasable foam, uh, not foam, almost netting uh, that has um, grass and um, ground foam kind of stuff in it. And so this is all done with leftovers. I mean, I, I don't think I broke any new uh, products out here. So I just rating my own uh, leftover box. But uh, you can see how I wanted to get some effect. I had little pieces of air fern as well stuck in this box of leftovers. And they're kind of creeping up the whitewashed wall here. I really like that effect. And down here in the corner, uh, these are a company called Mini Nature, or Mini Nature, I guess. Uh, there's no E on the end. Um, and uh, they make really nice little flowers and stuff. Um, so I've got, uh, let me see, somewhere in here, yeah, here, uh, just on the wall, uh, they make a nice golden rod. You just cut with the scissors, take a little bit, and just um, put a little dab of glue and set it in the glue, and away you go. Um, and I've got a sort of generic kind of flower um, netting here that I used in some areas. The key is, like, variety. So you can see here's a pile of twigs. I have another whole jar of just like broken twigs and leftovers from making tr trees I, I you know like it's tempting to just toss out all, all that stuff but if you if you're at all methodical about um, putting it all together so you can find it <laughs> well that's another story um, you can uh, retrieve some of it for a little project like this so it looks like somebody's been clearing some brush and somebody must have been clearing some brush over here and just toss some of the stuff underneath the station platform I kind of like the look of that um, a sort of a slightly mysterious area underneath the station. Um, almost, David, I, David, I hate to, I hate like yeah. to be able to do this, but I got to move along here. Yeah, I'm almost done. Yeah, I got I think one or two more pictures. So, okay, I, I'll just tell you uh, this is uh, carpenter's glue thinned about fifty fifty with an eyedropper that I use for everything, and uh, here's a, a close up of some of the finished scenery and the stairs all together. And I think, there we go. That's the whole scene. There you go. I, Thanks, I, think that, I think that's fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. And I, I apologize oh, no problem. Uh, for, uh, for having to butt in. But 
I've just got to move along because we're just running a little late tonight. But thank yeah. you so much and, and look forward for you to come back. Sure will. See you in a while.